hello students uh, so we are at the end of this particular uh, structure analysis uh, you know it's the end of the unit so it's a unsymmetrical bending and shear center yeah unsymmetrical bending name itself unsymmetrical bending which is not symmetrical right that is unsymmetrical but unsymmetrical bending of what what is that bending you know and for what we are studying uh, this topic so you know that in our uh, civil engineering uh, since one year you are studying about beams and columns right so mostly this unsymmetrical bending it occurs with respect to we consider it with respect to beams okay so beams also what type of beams beams mostly steel beams okay so in this particular uh, chapter the beams you will be seeing the cross section like channel section i section rectangular section so they are mostly steel sections we consider so that uh, we see uh, practically so uh, we know that beam it's a, it is a structural member if you remember beam is a structural uh, member right uh, suppose if we consider this as a beam it is a structural member and it takes a transverse load right if this is the beam alignment so it takes a transverse load okay and such particular if loading is like this okay so so such particular part uh, such particular uh, action of the loads it will create symmetrical bending okay it will create it will be cause of a symmetrical bending in particular beam okay if you cut a cross section if, and if you study so how it will be the cross section you will draw a rectangle and a beam acting uh, in line okay in line with the axis suppose we consider a cross section let me just draw it here. suppose we consider a cross section like this cut it anywhere okay so this beam you can see that it is acting like this so it can create a symmetrical bending in the particular structure okay now if you see this particular case here in this particular case the similar cross section cross section is similar but beam is uh, but load is acting in some angle okay it is acting in some angle so symmetrical cross section but this particular load it is acting in some angle so it may create a unsymmetrical bending it may be a cause it can uh, it can become a cause for a unsymmetrical bending okay now uh, there are uh, you know that for beam the cross sectional dimension right cross sectional dimension is much smaller when we compare to its length and uh, even the beam width if you see uh, it will be across the uh, beam it will be same it won't uh, mostly it won't change now there are if you remember there are two types of beams so there is a one we call it as a thin beam there is a thin beam so thin beam is also called as eulers beam or even bernoulli's beam okay thin beam is also called as eulers or bernoulli's beam and thick beam is called as timoshenko beam so uh, so euler bernoulli these were the people okay who worked on this uh, thin beam so the name given behind their name okay and the thick beam is given uh, is given by the name as timoshenko timoshenko was a you know uh, there are excellent uh, books available uh, on his name uh, for the structures so you can uh, theory of elasticity for higher studies uh, it's a very good uh, good book then mechanics uh, of material so great work done by timoshenko so he worked on thick beam thick beam so what do you mean by thin and thick beam so thin beam a uh, thin beam is nothing but when its length is greater than or equal to 15 times of its thickness okay so that is a thin beam so other is other can be a thick beam so in thin beams mostly whenever uh, if a beam is thin beam so in this deformation due to shear is almost we do not consider deformation due to shear so till now 
uh, whatever beams we have considered, right? Uh, simply supported beam we have considered, and some load is acting. So, uh, if if this beam is really long, right? I suppose three, four, five meter long means it's a very long span. So, in such case, so whatever deformation is happening in this particular beam, so in that contribution uh, of shear is negligible. Okay, for thin beam, contribution of shear is negligible. But when the beam is thick. Then shear deformation we consider. Okay, so that is the difference uh, between thin and thick beam. So uh, for a beam one-dimensional structural member, uh, if we consider it as a one-dimensional structure member, then length is very high uh, when we compare to lateral dimension. So uh, these are the few things. And then uh, uh, when we see uh, when uh, we progress with the chapter, then we will be using some sign conventions as well. Anyway, before that, just uh, let's see the symmetrical and unsymmetrical bending. So, uh, unsymmetrical bending, it can occur even for symmetrical cross sections, okay. So, unsymmetrical bending when uh, section is symmetrical. So, in that case, also unsymmetrical bending can happen. But in this case, the load line, you know, the load which is acting, it can be in some inclination. The load line can be some inclined. So in all the cases, load line can can be of uh, it will be inclined. So in that case, it can create uh, even though the sections are symmetrical, they can be reason for the unsymmetrical bending if the load line is inclined to both the principal axes. Okay, if these are the principal axes, then the load line is inclined to both the principal axes. And the next case is when the section is unsymmetrical okay these are the unsymmetrical sections anyway though this is symmetrical about uh, the x axis but uh, for such cases also unsymmetrical bending can happen when load line is along any centroidal axis okay so if load line is along any centroidal axis suppose load is acting like this or acting like this then also it can create a unsymmetrical bending so we know that uh, Till now in our uh, study, uh, simple uh, bending theory you have studied and we know that uh, bending stresses, uh, you have studied that if you remember a bending, a simple bending formula. Right, so you know this is a stress value. So simple bending theory you know. So in this uh, bending stress uh, topic, it is assumed that the neutral axis of the cross section of the beam is perpendicular to the plane of the loading. So this means that the plane of the loading is parallel to the plane containing the principal centroidal axis of the inertia of cross section of the beam. So the this is symmetrical bending. Okay, so if it is acting along the uh, axis. Uh, for a symmetrical section, it, it, it is a cause of symmetrical bending. Now, if the plane of the loading or the plane of the bending does not lie or if it is not parallel to a plane that contains the principal centroidal axis of the cross section, then that bending is known as unsymmetrical bending. So, we have seen uh, the two cases where unsymmetrical bending the neutral axis is not perpendicular to the plane of the bending. So, uh, these are the two examples where unsymmetrical bending uh, will be uh, a cause even when the section is symmetrical and it can create unsymmetrical bending when the load is in some angle. And also when the section is unsymmetrical, in that case also, if the load line is acting, along any centroidal axis then also it can cause unsymmetrical bending. Now if we consider some more examples like so in this particular T section if the load is applied in the plane of the symmetry suppose kindly see it is see it is a symmetrical okay so if the load is applied in the plane of the symmetry suppose let us consider it as a Consider it as a y axis and consider it as a z axis. And if the load is acting like this, then the load applied in the plane of the symmetry. So, symmetrical cross section. Okay, this is a cross section if you can visualize it. 
so this this beam can be like this i'm just making it a small to show you a 3d okay so when you cut it and then you can see a cross section of the beam like this okay now here the load is acting here means the first very first diagram i have shown so load is acting like this so here this will create you know symmetrical cross section uh, cross sectional load it is applied in the plane of the symmetric symmetry so the bending will take place in x z plane okay this is this is y z plane this is y this is y axis this is uh, z axis so x x will be perpendicular to this board okay perpendicular to this board will be the x axis so here bending will uh, take place takes place uh, will take place in x z plane now this is a case of symmetrical okay here it will bend in a symmetrical manner this is a symmetrical bending now for the same case if the load is applied like this now kindly ignore this now the second case i am telling for the second case if the load is acting in some angle okay and this is our axis so it is acting in some angle theta now such case in such case bending you can see the load is acting in some angle so bending takes place for this particular case bending will take place in x z plane and it will also bend in x y plane okay whereas x is a perpendicular to this board okay so this will create a unsymmetrical bending okay so hope you understood this and uh, now uh, let us see this channel this we have considered it before also i have shown you this diagram if you consider this channel uh, sorry this angle section so if you if we consider it as a y and z angle and if some load is a load p is acting so in this bending will take place in both the planes okay so both the planes bending it uh, bending will occur here so euler's beam theory you know so basic assumptions that in euler's beam theory that length is much higher than the lateral dimension and plane cross section remains plane before and after bending and stresses in lateral direction are negligible okay stresses in lateral direction are negligible and the thin beam strain variation is linear across the cross section and it is linear elastic it follows the hooke's law so it is called as uh, material uh, obeys hooke's law so this is the basic understanding about the unsymmetrical bending and yes uh, yes we can follow some sign convention conventions so we may consider uh, as we have followed before that uh, what is positive or what is negative so it's up to us like sign convention this can be called as positive and the uh, other way it can be negative when we solve the problem and uh, uh, sign convention like sagging is positive hogging is negative hogging is negative so this will uh, this will come in picture if uh, we solve the problems uh, so students this is the introduction uh, for unsymmetrical bending so we'll solve uh, how the moment of inertia what is the property of beam cross section and moment uh, what is principal moment of inertia then how do we consider stresses in unsymmetrical bending so all these topics we are going to cover in uh, cover in next class okay thanks for listening to this class thank you